Hello, everyone. Um, hope you already enjoyed the DeloitteCon here in Berlin. Um, I'm happy to have the talk today about continuous testing. Uh, and I would like to know from you who already tried to set up and continuous build and continuous testing process in this company. Okay, at least some. How long it took? More than an hour? More than five hours? Okay. I would like to show you today uh, how you... Oh, I shouldn't go away from the microphone. Um, I would sh show you today uh, how you could set up such a process in really less than five minutes. Um, but before we do that, uh, some points about me. Um, I'm currently CDO of TestObject. TestObject is a cloud service um, which provides quality assurance um, services to Android developers. So you could just upload your APK file, create some test cases, and um, let them execute on different mobile devices, different resolutions, whatever you want. I've won last year the Berlin Expert Days, newcomer prize. Um, we can talk about also testing, uh, and I've gained about eight years' experience um, working for SAP and IBM as senior developer and Scrum Master. And if you would like to follow me or follow us at TestObject, just follow Alu Edeke or at TestObject. Let's have a look at the agenda for today. So first, some theoretical stuff. I would like to explain why we need test automation for Android. Therefore, we will check out how manual testing could work and why we may better use automated testing. And, and the second and maybe more interesting and practical part, um, we will build the continuous testing process um, with some cloud services. So let's start. Um, when I'm talking about testing today, I'm just talking about functional correctness. So no accessibility, no security testing. Um, it's just about functional correctness. Um, we could ensure functional correctness for sure with manual testing and automated testing. And I must say manual testing is great. So it's really an easy starting point for every um, project. Uh, you just write down some easy to understand test cases and they are executed by hopefully some some smart people. Um, this should at least uh, solve your quality issues within your first project or uh, first project days. Um, manual testing is also quite good for usability and accessibility testing because there aren't really testing tools out which could automate those tests. But who of you has already done manual testing on Android devices? Who liked it? No one, I could believe. So if I would really ensure that my app is running fine on Android devices, um, I may start with some test cases and execute them on some default configurations. But after publishing it to the market, I would recognize, OK, mm, user A has problem has a problem with Android version 4.2. The other one has issues on a resolution lower than the one you have, uh, you have tested. And maybe another one is using your app on Cyanogen mod, and that's also not working. So um, if I have about 100 tests and then would like to test on any Android version which is out and any resolution which is available uh, as device resolution and maybe also on different mods, I will get crazy. So I've already seen customers who have to execute um, about more than 1,000 test cases um, on different settings to um, validate the uh, functional correctness of the application. And that can't scale. Because if you want to execute 1,000 or more tests before you release to the app market, um, you have to spend weeks for that. So to test functional correctness on Android, I always recommend automate your integration test cases. OK. For automated tests, we might note that uh, we could divide those into the unit testing and integration testing. Unit testing is made by and for developers. So someone is writing some source code which evaluates whether a component uh, works as expected. Important here is um, that you just test a single component and not the whole system because the execution of those um, tests should be really, really fast. 
maybe less than some milliseconds. And if you have an, a slow DB connection or slow internet connection, um, you are not able to execute your tests uh, in less than a millisecond. So if you have dependencies to network stuff, uh, backend resources, you should always use mocks um, to mock out the slow stuff. As tool, we also from test subject using JUnit and it integrates well into every IDE. And I'm also convinced that the newest version of JUnit um, does its job very well. For integration testing, um, was quite different. So the goal here is really to test the complete system, not just a single component. You really would like to know whether all the components you have in your app, all the different views you have, uh, play nice together. And you really create tests that are done from an end user perspective. You would like to know if the end user tries to use your app, if it's still working. And thus, I always recommend that integration tests are not created by developers because they always have a very specific view on the app. And maybe product owners or testers are better suited for this, that case. Um, for integration testing, um, the pros are really that those tests are much more meaningful than JUnit tests. So you're ju not just testing a single component, which is okay, but uh, you really know after executing all your integration tests that your complete system is working as you would like. And the second pro is also that it's fast, so at least fast in comparison to manual test execution. You could run integra automated integration tests um, in parallel, and you don't need any human resources to get the results. So it's also efficient. You save a lot of money. You don't need a workforce, 10 to 100 people, uh, which are executing your test cases on all the devices. And you might already recognize that executing the same test case on 10 or 20 different configurations is quite boring, even for students. OK. But if I have tests, I also have to execute them. Um, I've just heard that some people don't still think that compilation is testing. That's not the case. You have to compile always your code after you have changed it, and you also have to execute your integration tests. And we also recommend them execute them immediately and not just once a week or once a month or just before you want to release into the market. Um, because um, you always need immediate feedback. If you change something in the system, um, you want to have feedback if you have broken something. And if you could fix it immediately, it's much cheaper than fixing it after a month or a week or whatever. And the pros also that you could release it at any time. If you know that your system is still working and you need to um, publish a hotfix into the market, um, you could do it immediately without thinking about it. And the most important thing about continuous testing for me is always that I could sleep better. If I know that I've done a big change on my app, um, and I go home and already have the results that the tests are all green, I could sleep much better. OK, how we could implement such a continuous testing process? Um, first, we start with the development, changing some code. This code is submitted to your source code repository. And yeah, there's, what you then basically need is someone who is compiling this stuff and testing it. Therefore, you all know what normally have a build server. This one gets notified by uh, a push maybe from the source code system and starts building your application or APK. After the APK is built, you could uh, immediately deploy it into some testing environment, which means emulators or real devices. And on those uh, systems, testing systems, you'll then execute all your integration tests. Um, this, the results of this integration test then should be sent to the developer to get really um, the feedback if all still works or if you break something. Um, for today, I would like to present you how to set up this with cloud services in five minutes. So as IDE, I prefer Eclipse. Um, I will show you how to commit the source to a sample open source calculator project. This one then will trigger a job on CloudBees, an on-demand Jenkins build server, um, and create my APK. And this APK is then uploaded to the test object testing platform and um, executes your integration test cases and send you the um, 
feedback you want to have after committing a change. Um, I would like to start now with the end, with the testing itself so that you could see the application which I'm using. Um, so to get started with test object, just go to our website and register for the beta. Uh, then you will receive our uh, your credentials. Or if you want to have credentials immediately, just go to Yael and she will ensure that you get them. Okay. Okay. And getting started with test object is really easy. You just create it, need to create a new app and upload your APK. So uh, we have a calculator which we would like to test. And I hope you could see that there's a save button. And you could upload a new version of your app, which is this one. So this APK is uh, the result of Maven build um, for my open source project. Uh, I will show you in some minutes. Save, upload. And now we could al already create a new test. For a calculator, we might want to test the plus operation if it still works. So test plus operation. And uh, what you could do here is uh, select the device where you would like to record your test case. So just continue. And I hope it's now able to connect because I'm using my access point here. So what is now happening in the background is that we are starting in the cloud in Android emulator where we install the APK file which we have uploaded a minute ago. And we provide you um, remote desktop access to this um, application so that you could use it um, as you would like to, as you normally use it on your phone. And hopefully it starts now. Okay. Just try it again and check out. Okay. So normally we would expect that if you use our product, uh, you have a really fast internet connection because the um, remote desktop protocol we are using is a little bit heavy. And, ah, okay. And now it also works fine. Um, as I already said, we would, we would like to test if the plus operation works fine. So what you normally do is just type 40 plus 60 and get a result, 100. OK, the calculator should behave as expected. Um, what you might notice already is that all the inputs I've gave to the emulator are recorded on the right side here. And what you could do here as well, because this is not a test, that's just a um, um, list of clicks. Um, you would also tell um, your script, which we have recorded now, that um, we would like to see the 100 here. And if we open now, okay. Okay. Um, what we see here is the before and the after result um, of the action. So before we press the equal sign here, uh, we had the 60, and after we got the results 100. And to have a valid test case now, we would like to say uh, we are expecting that always when the test case is executed, the result 100 should appear here on the screen. And that's now basically our test case. I just want to tune it a little bit. We have here some delays we, we normally accept. We just reduce it to one. That's not always necessary, but speed up the presentation a little bit.
Okay. So this is now safe. And now we have a test case. And this test case should be executed always when a developer submits um, some code to the source code repository. The source code is hosted on GitHub in our case. So also open source, so every one of you could um, check it out. It's on github.com test object calculator. And the source code is taken from a SourceForge app. So just have a look into. And what we would like to do now is ensure if someone pushes to GitHub that the stuff is also executed and built on CloudBees and then um, the test execution is triggered on test object. So what we need to do is go into CloudBees and tell them that they have to build our app. Just log in. So I already had an account, of course. And what I've done in CloudBees is just one thing up front. Um, if you go to Manage Jenkins, Configure System, um, I've configured that he should handle the push notifications from GitHub automatically, which is done here. So it's just a Jenkins plugin, and you could say, Jenkins, uh, please notify GitHub that I want to have push notification as something is pushed into a given repository. And that's basically done here. And what we need now is a job which builds always our IPK. So we create a new job, test calculator maybe, and we will tell them, okay, we are using Maven to build our project. Just continue. For that, for the job configuration, we don't need too much. We just tell him, hey, get your source code from Git. And some of other configuration. OK, my configuration is gone. So we will take it from the job I've already created. So that was an old build, an old build job, which done basically, basically the same. Just provide your GitHub URL, um, tell him which branch to use, doesn't matter here. Tell him that the build trigger is a push from GitHub, and say him that he should use your POMXML to build the project. And another detail we need to do to use test object because we are providing credentials is to tell him that um, he should use some different configuration files, which I've uploaded already. Um, that's just a static XML for a normal Maven build. OK, save. OK, now we have the build job. And this one, test calculator, this one should be triggered when we change something into our, in our product, project. Um, our project looks like this, default Android project setup. We have some basic source code, um, which has all the logic into, not very nice, but should be sufficient for the presentation now. And we have a POM XML, which is already configured to build at least um, our APK file. Uh, for that, I'm just using com jray maven plugin, um, which builds from this project structure an APK file. Um, this is already pushed to GitHub. So what we would like to do now is also configuring that um, after the build of the APK, APK um, the artifact is uploaded to test object and the tests are executed there. What we need for that is the test object Maven plugin. Uh, are you able to read this? Was it too small? In the last row? OK. Um, what we do here now is just say, OK, take the Maven plugin, execute it during the integration test phase of Maven, and um, took a server. Server in this case is configured in the settings XML file I've shown you in the CloudBeast instance. The name there is test object. And there's just stored my credentials, which I don't want to show to you. Um, our user ID, 
uh, we have used is Droidcon. The project I've created is Calculator, and now we need a batch ID. What is a batch ID? Um, if you execute tests, you normally not just want to execute one test, you want to execute a bunch of tests on a bunch of configurations. And to create a batch of test object, uh, no, go up to there, just select the test you would like to execute, press play, and then you could create a new batch. That's a test batch for Droidcon. Where I say, okay, execute the plus operation test we have created before, execute it on the Android for the OSV version with those resolutions here, and yeah, maybe we also execute it on Android 2, and save it. So normally you would add here more than one test. And now we got a batch ID, which is two, which we could enter here. Okay. That and that. Okay. If we now push this change to GitHub, GitHub will notify CloudBees that something has changed on my project. So CloudBees will start building the project or the APK and uploading and executing the test case on test object. Um, now what I haven't shown so far is that those tests are really executable. So what it will basically do is reproduce my inputs. I will show you. And back it is. So, so it will basically do this, what I've done now manually, automatically. So execute the inputs I've given before. So maybe what's quite interesting here, um, we are not calling Android APIs to execute those test cases. We are using some image Im uh, recognition um, algorithm. So we are saving a lot of um, properties on, of those elements here. So for the button, maybe the color, size, position, um, relative position to other objects, and then trying to reproduce it, even if the resolution or color or whatever is changing of the app. Um, now we have seen that the test execution was su successful, and now we would like to execute it also um, automatically. Um, to also present that it's not just all fake, um, I will enhance our small calculator and tell them, okay, when you execute the plus operation, um, then please do multiply instead. So we should see an error when the tests are executed on test object now. So now we push the stuff. And see what happens. Okay, now it's pushed to GitHub. Could check it out at GitHub, commits. We could see the changes here are arrived. What we do now um, is go back here. And we could already see that GitHub notified CloudBees to execute our build job we have configured. Um, now we have to wait a little bit. Um, the drawback of the plan I've selected here is that the free plan from um, CloudBees and they need a little bit longer for execution. But anyway, let's check out what it's doing. So it does now a normal Maven build. The result should be an APK file and this one should then be um, sent to a test object. This will take a time. Um, therefore, I would like to show you some other functionalities from test object in the meantime. Um, so we would like to offer functionalities as easy as possible to, the cust to our customers. So you could simply vote. Uh, okay, maybe I should do it a little bit slower. So you could rotate simply the device. You could set the GPS very easily here. Um, 
So the, those emulators actually are running into a data center somewhere in the world, and you need to emulate your position sometimes to test whether your app is working or not. So here's really an easy way to do so. Um, yeah. So let's check. OK. The Maven build is already executing. And you could see that the Android Maven plugin does its job. And at the end, it should execute the test object Maven plugin, which now triggers the test execution on test object. And here we would just like to show you that um, the Cloud Beast Maven build now created a new uh, batch execution, and this batch execution um, is available as report. And if we check out this report, we could see, OK, the test plus operation should be executed um, on the Android um, 4 and Android 2 images. And we should see the results also in some seconds here. Um, so the build now is already finished. The reason for that is that I have just um, some minutes at CloudBeast for free, which I could use, so we don't wait until the results are back in CloudBeast. Um, for the presentation here, I would like to show them here somewhere. OK. OK. If every one of you says, no, OK, this integration testing is not the thing I want to have, um, we also offer a different product since yesterday, um, which might be interesting for you. There you just provide an URL to your web application, and you could get the screenshots for all different configurations of Android. So different um, emulator versions, different um, browsers, and also different resolutions. Did I miss something? I don't think so. Exactly. And now we already have, have some results from the test execution, and I hope would like to show me. So it has reproduced the test we have recorded and has failed in the last step. OK. So it was able to match. So as we do image matching and we have those parts tried to match, um, it tried to match the um, 1 with the 2, 4 here, which was not possible, of course. And 0, 0 is available. So that is OK. But I mean, we see the results. Um, we figured out that there is a mistake and that I should better undo uh, the change I have done. OK. That was basically what I would like to show for today. Um, let's go back to the presentation. Um, OK. As I already said, uh, if you would like to check out the source code and maybe also the pump configuration, um, gitter.com slash test object slash calculator. Um, register for free at CloudBeast uh, to set up your Jenkins configuration there. Um, if you want to have a test object beta account, just go to testobject.com slash beta or get in contact with us after this presentation. And if you want to stay connected with us, um, at aluedike at test object. Yeah. Are there any questions?